Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and God's mercy and his blessings. My name is Muhammad Muslim and I'm going to tell you how I came into Islam. I grew up in Sweden. I was born in the late 50s. I grew up as most people, which means really without much thought of religion. But as I got older, about 20, 21, I started thinking about what's happening around in the world. Everything seems to be just working for their own immediate uh, gain and no thought about the future. And I, I started getting very concerned about how things are in the world. And without really having been particularly interested in religion, or rather I used to say that I was actively disinterested in religion, I started pondering over what is the meaning of life, what happens after death, etc., all these big existential questions. I started wondering and pondering, and during this process, I suppose, I, I, I became a bit aloof from my friends and the things that they like to do. And after a lot of thinking, I came to a few conclusions. One was that there has to be one truth. It cannot be, as some philosophers say, that what every person thinks that's true for him or herself. There has to be one reality. What this reality is, I had no idea. But I knew that as much that there has to be one. Maybe no one in the whole world realizes it. Maybe some people realize and some don't. I certainly did not. And also I thought that all these questions that are going around in my mind, they have only one answer. And this one answer will be so simple that one and one makes two, it has to be simpler than that. But after this, it was as if there was a barrier. I could not get any further just by thinking and pondering and wondering by myself, as, as, as if I needed some outside assistance. There was like there was a wall that I could not scale. Anyway, during this process, I also quit college for the fourth time. And uh, I went to the north of Sweden, where my sister and brother-in-law had a farm they were trying to live original lifestyle they used to call them the the green wavers like the green wave there was a green wave in in the 70s people trying to get back to a more natural way of life so they had this goat farm in the north of Sweden living a very traditional old-fashioned life I went there to live with them and found a little cottage up in the forest on a mountain and started living there all by my own ever so often I'd come to my sister for some company and some food and one day when I was sitting in my sister's house, this man walked in through the door. And he had a big beard, an enormous turban on his head. And it was something I'd never seen the like of. I had never really heard about Islam. If someone would have asked me, what is Islam, or who is Muhammad, what is the Quran, I would have no, had no idea what to answer. Anyway, this man came in, and we started talking and chatting a bit. And to make a rather long story short, when I was going up to my little cottage in the evening, he followed me. Now this was near midsummer in the north of Sweden in 1980. And through this very short and bright summer's night, this man started telling me about Islam. I don't really remember what he said, but I do remember the impression that he left me with. I got this impression that this man, who was rather older than I was at that time, I was 21, he was in his maybe early or even late 40s, I was almost compelled to ask him that you have lived in this country for such a long time, how come you can have such a soft heart? Now, this must be rather a, a strange question to ask someone that you have known for a total of a few hours. But his answer was even more strange, because he said, I don't know if I can explain it, but maybe I can show you. And he stood out. There in my little room, there was only one room really in the cottage, he stood up there in my cottage and without any hesitation said the Islamic call to prayer, the Adhan. And then he started saying his prayers. I realize now it must have been the morning prayers. Having talked through the night, this was time for the morning prayers. And as I was sitting there on my little kitchen, Swedish traditional Swedish kitchen city, of a wooden city, I was sitting there cross-legged in a the corner of the city, and he was now praying in front of me, showing me 
how to keep your heart soft in this harsh and cold world. But it was so powerful, it was overawing. I, out of awe, I was not even able to watch. I had to lower my gaze. So I'm sitting there in the seti with my gaze lowered and he is praying there in front of me. After praying, uh, after his prayers, he, he sat down and did some, some uh, meditation, you can call it, some dhikr, we call it in Islam, some remembrance of God. And I do not honestly remember now if it was during the prayers or after the prayers, during the remembrance, that I, it was like there was a, and this sounds a bit, almost a bit uh, funny, but as there was a ray of light from the heavens straight into my heart that there is only one God. Suddenly I just knew there is only one God. And I realized that this person, this man has, he has what I'm looking after, you know, this is the thing at least for me. So I decided there and then to follow him. He had mentioned through the night uh, when we were talking that he was going to Pakistan. He had his, I think he used the term his guru, meaning his spiritual leader in Pakistan. We do not use the term guru in Islam, but to make me understand what he meant, I think he used that term. And I'm going to visit him, so if you dare, you can come with me. Not if you have time or if you can afford it or something uh, as, as, as worldly as that, but if you, if you have the courage, you can come with me. So I decided there and then I'm going to go with him to Pakistan. So within a week or 10 days, we got our passports and visas and everything together, and we went to Pakistan. But it was really this, this night, this night somewhere very near midsummer in the north of Sweden that it happened to me. I can honestly say that I, in the evening I had never heard about Islam and in the morning I was a Muslim. Already the same day he taught me the prayers, he taught me the ablutions in a very beautiful way and, and that's the way it went. I went with him to Pakistan, spent my first Ramadan, my first fasting month in Pakistan, traveled with him to Morocco, spent three months in Morocco and both with him and on my own traveled uh, around Europe, visited a lot of places where Muslims live and ended up after a couple of years as a student in, an, uh, in, in, in a Muslim, uh, what you call a theological school, I studied basically to become an Imam. But the story of my conversion or my falling into Islam as I prefer to call it was this one night in the north of Sweden. So at the moment I'm working as the Imam in Masjid Aisha in the city center of Stockholm and I'm also working as a teacher of Islamic studies and Arabic language among other things in a Muslim adult education college or a community college also situated in Stockholm in Sweden.